Hey guys, Matt here again. Um, might get Hebrew 7 done today. Maybe we'll need one more video. And uh, I was told, I was asked to look into the camera. See, I've got a little screen over here. And I'm so narcissistic that I love watching myself read. No, I'm just kidding. But somebody asked me if I would look in the camera and it's not the, you're not the first person and I'm not going to embarrass you by calling you out. S-O-J-C, S-O-4-J-C. <clears throat> but now I'm looking in the camera, so praise God. <laughs> I'm giving you a hard time. I'm glad you watch. Okay, so yesterday we saw that uh, Jesus was a high priest not based on legal requirements, not based on the Levitical line, but by the power of an indestructible life, right? For it is witnessed of him, you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. For, on the one hand, I, I love this section here. This I know we're recapping this, but listen. For, on the one hand, a former commandment is set aside because of its weakness and its uselessness. For the law made nothing perfect, but on the other hand, a better hope is introduced through which we draw near to God. So, uh, imagine here the, uh, the author's continually softening up the Jew and reminding them uh, that hey this law this law that that you've been that you've set up and that you've uh, been using for so long and now that you want to go back to even after you met Jesus Christ this law just so you know just want you to know it, it, it's weakness it is weakness and uselessness it, that's what it is it's it's weak and useless it's not for you the law was, we know now, the law is just a schoolmaster to, to bring us to Christ, right? Jesus Christ, in fact, fulfilled the law. Um, so, because of that, a better hope is introduced, through which we draw near to God, verse 20, picking up for today. And it was not without an oath. We, he goes back to this oath again. This is interesting. And it was not without an oath, for those who formerly became priests were not made such without an oath. So, so the Aaron didn't have an oath from God, right? But this one, this one, this Jesus was made a priest with an oath by the one, right, who said to him, "The Lord has sworn and will not change His mind. You are a priest forever." That's awesome. God makes an oath. We've already looked at that, and you might ask yourself, why does the author keep repeating himself? Right, and and I, and I confess, at this point, uh, it gets long, especially when I'm in the prison and I have to wait a whole week. Or sometimes we'll have a break in the prison and I'll have to skip a week. And it's like, oh man, this is where you gotta dig in and press on, because Hebrews gets a little laborious. It gets a little long in this section. But remember, remember Hebrews 5:11 through 6, uh, 1 through 3. What was the author saying? He was saying, hey, I want to get into this with you guys, but you become dull of hearing. You're still sipping on the milk. You're still at the baby land. You're still, you're still stuck on the basic oracles of God, the, the, the basic teachings of Christ. Uh, so here he keeps on backing it up and, and hitting them again. Jesus is a high priest. Jesus is a, from a different line. Jesus lived the indestructible life. He defeated death. He doesn't die like Aaron and, and the, the other priests. And then he, he kind of hits it in verse 20. He says, This makes Jesus the guarantor of a better covenant. It's like, thank God you said it. There, there it is. He just lays it out. This makes all of this makes Jesus the guarantor of a better covenant. Okay? The former priests were many in number. There was hundreds of, of priests because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. What was their biggest problem? Well, first of all, they were sinners too. And second of all, they died, right? <laughs> but he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, in light of this, because of all this, because Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father right now, because Je there's never a moment where Jesus is not the high priest. There is never a moment when he's not interceding for us. There's never a moment when he is not cleansing us of our sins. Because of this, consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God 
through him, how do we draw near to God? Through Christ, since he always lives to make intercession for them. This is huge. Isn't this interesting, too, when we compare this to Hebrews 6, 4 through 8? Remember? Remember when it looked like maybe we could lose our salvation and, and we looked at how the author went from the impersonal, or from the personal, rather, bam, all of a sudden he slips into the impersonal, then he goes back to the personal. So remember, he's holding this group, these people who, who can lose their salvation, who are leaving the, the foundations of Christ. He holds out that group and says, don't be like this group, okay? And here, in, in verse uh, 25, he says, consequently, because of this Jesus, because he never dies, because he's our high priest, he is able to save to the uttermost. That uttermost, uh, that, that means completely, thoroughly, thoroughly, and completely. You know, Philippians 1, 6, he who has begun a good work will continue it to the day of Christ. He doesn't stop. He doesn't half-bake us. He doesn't give us a long life. No, he gives us eternal life, right? John 10, 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, right? And I give them eternal life, that no one should take them from my grasp. So here we see, consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near God. How do we draw near God? Through him, by being born again, by by accessing Him, by accessing the throne of grace through Him, since He always lives to make intercession for them. Jesus Christ always, if you're born again, He's always making intercession for you. You can look that up in Romans 8.34. Uh, incidentally, just on a side note, Romans 8.26, the Holy Spirit is interceding for us. Always. Think of this, guys. Okay, <laughs> this is amazing. I wasn't going to go here, but this is awesome. So here we have God the Father, right? And then we have... God the Holy Spirit and God the Son. And, and the Holy Spirit and the Son are constantly interceding for you and for me to God the Father. So two of the parts of the Godhead are interceding to the third part of the Godhead, God the Father. And when are they doing it? Constantly. All the time. <laughs> if that doesn't excite you, man, you need to check your pulse. That's amazing. So here we have Jesus Christ. We can draw near now to God. We can draw near to God through Christ as our high priest since he always lives to make intercession for us. That is utterly, utterly amazing. Um, I think we just need to, we need to remember the, the author here. Is, he's exposing the folly of their thinking. He's exposing them and saying, what are you guys doing? Here's, here's Aaron. Okay, Here's Jesus. We've been seeing that comparing and contrasting. Jesus is, it's, they're not next to each other. Jesus is here. Melchizedek is here. The Levitical line is here. It's done. It is finished. Jesus paid the price. Um, so, I think we'll, we'll stop there, come back and, and hit the next couple verses and we'll move on to uh, chapter 8. In chapter 8, we're going to see the, the, the prophecy from Jeremiah with the new covenant. And it's going to start picking back up again. So, uh, all right, thanks for watching. Um, make sure Jesus is your high priest. Make sure he's your priest and your king. Make sure you're not just living in the light of Aaron. Make sure you're not, um, you're not walking in, in, uh, in, in Jesus as your Aaron. Make sure you're walking in Jesus as your Melchizedek. Make sure you're not focusing on the, the milk, the, the, the uh, basic elementary, as the author says, the elementary uh, teachings of Christ. We need to focus on what Jesus Christ is doing today. It's great that he died on the cross. Praise God. It's wonderful that he was resurrected. Yes. But he's alive and well and working today, interceding for us today. We need That's what we do when we grow up in Christ. We start focusing on that. That's awesome. All right. I'm rambling. Have a good day. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.